With, it, with me today here on Church Mech is the church online pastor from Liquid Church. Actually, your title should be Awesome Church <laughs> Online Pastor. Uh, recently, there was a news story that broke that talked about communion online. So basically, think of church online, everyone out there watching, think of church online where you have, you know, maybe the worship service and then the sermon, and part of the service was taking part in communion online. Tell us a little bit more about that, Kenny. Yeah, so um, one of the holy sacraments of the church um, is something that um, has become um, a bit of a discussion here um, in the church online community, and uh, the Wall Street Journal picked up the story recently. Um, And and the question really comes down, I think, fundamentally uh, to the definition of what community is, and um, are we legitimately forming uh, communities of worship, gatherings around the Lord's table um, through this virtually mediated medium that we call church online. Um, and so there's obviously critiques of, um, you know, whether it's valid, whether it's authentic, whether we can do that. Um, one of the major denominations in the state um, actually officially put a moratorium on um, being able to uh, perform host, um, you know, the Eucharist. Um, in church online gatherings. Um, So that's an official denominational statement. Um, And it's not a banishing of it, but basically they said they need to look into it and study it further uh, before just letting it happen willy-nilly. So in one regard, I I respect the the denomination because they're taking it seriously. Um, It's an acknowledgement that the church online community um, across different parishes um, across North America and the globe um, are doing something that's worthy of, um, you know, reflection and seeing, um, taking it seriously. So um, in one sense, it's great uh, that the fact that the church with a capital C is really um, trying to figure out if, you know, where are the boundaries, where are the edges that uh, we can go? Yeah, I think that's a really positive reply as well. I mean, they're not just flippantly saying, no, 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 or having yes. a knee-jerk reaction. They're saying, okay, let's just pause for a second. I mean, no matter what you think, whether you're automatically for it or against it, if you have a strong uh, persuasion one way or another, this is good news because people are pausing to really think about this. So let me ask you, Kenny, being the awesome online church pastor at Liquid Church, uh, what, it, what is your perspective on this? What do you think about people at home there for whatever reason, for whatever reason, whether they're traveling, whether they're a missionary, whether they're, they can't get out of their home because of an illness, whatever the reason may be, they're, at, they're, they're watching the online service and it's time to, to partake in the sacraments and have communion. What is your perspective on that? Is this, is this like thumbs up, thumbs down, halfway? What, what's your perspective on it, Kenny? Sure. First, I think we, uh, we take it seriously, at least in our church online community. Um, and even just the basic definition of what church online means, I think, is different across um, the different expressions that you'll come across. Um, so here, we believe and we hear um, Jesus' call that where two are gathered. Um, and so if you come to any of our five weekly online worship services here at liquidchurchonline.com, um, you'll see that they're not unmoderated because if they're, if they're unmoderated, if you can just literally log on to church online and no one else is there, um, what difference is that between that and renting a video from Netflix? Um, so we are not the church of Netflix. We are not trying to do that streaming uh, replay and, and call it church. Uh, we think that there is a distinctive of worship and gathering of these communities. So we have trained um, volunteer and uh, ministry hosts that actually moderate the chat. Uh, we have the ability to go into prayer rooms um, in one-on-one situations. We can then go offline also to um, a Skype or a video conferencing scenario if, if that needs to be as well. And so that's the first thing, that we we recognize that in worship and in community, you actually need more than one person, you need at least two together. Um, there's a lot of churches that have gone to the model of um, basically replays every hour on the hour. There's one church, I believe even Saddleback went to 160 services a week. And um, I haven't really uh, looked at their um, services recently, but I, I wonder if they actually have hosts or uh, a pastor or anybody from the ministry that's there in all 160 services. So right. that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is, yeah, we here we do... Um, believe that this gathering is valid. Um, 
I think the proponents talk about the fact that you're physically not in each other's presence um, makes it um, you know not authentic. And, and I actually think if you um, had a discussion further, uh, it's not the physicality that makes a difference in relationship. It's the intention, time, um, the actual real time development of the relationship together. So if we are in a room together um, and intentionally focused upon each other, uh, that's where the relationship happens. Um, the other analogy is if you're on a plane together with other people and you don't know who they are, what they're doing, um, is that a community? No. Just because you're physically locked in a box, uh, you know, 10,000 feet in the air, does not mean that you're in community with them. But if you are intentionally um, having focused conversations and interaction, um, that's where relationships form. And so because of that definition of community, we feel that we can have um, communion, the Eucharist, um, as a gathering around the Lord's table in this virtually mediated medium. Yeah, you know, you bring up some really good points, Kenny. I mean, as we're recording this, we are gathered together. I mean, if we're yes. not gathered together, I don't know what we are. I mean, we're interacting with each other. And, and, and to completely discount the fact that we are indeed gathered together, then every prayer that you've had with a friend or family member via Skype, yes, to say that, that, that doesn't count? Or how about... You know, people praying for each other on the telephone to, to just yes. kind of clock it back a little bit, uh, technology-wise, or even possibly, maybe this is a stretch, you know, written letter back in the day. You know, you write a letter, you know, agree with me in prayer on this, or Paul writing the, the, the epistles and sending them. I mean, he wasn't there. I mean, he wrote them, and he, you know, dropped them in the postbox office thing, right? Right. <laughs> I, mean, I think this is a great inflection point in the history of the church because yeah. it's forcing the discussion and really uh, trying to have us figure out um, as a body to understand what does it mean to be gathered together. Um, but we do see in the history of the church that technology is the thing that flips the switch and brings revolution and evolution to faith, right? Martin Luther um, with the Gutenberg Press and um, the Bible print, right? Like literally there, there are... Um, case studies in our past where technology is something that changes the game in terms of faith expression and how communities are gathered and, and, and move forward. Yeah, Martin Luther used a, a pen and paper. Yes. That's technology. And so, right. you know, I, I think like you said at the beginning, the fact that they're pausing to really reflect on this, I think is really good. And, you know, Kenny, the points that you brought up really stress really stresses to me the importance of defining the terms. You know, we're not talking about a pre-recorded sermon, like you said, where then in the, in the pre-recorded sermon, there's this time where you have communion. You're talking about real real time, live taking of the sacraments. And I think that as you define these terms, it really does change the discussion. Yes, yes. Now, theologically, there's um, other implications because a consecration of the host, the elements, um, the question is, you know, how far of a distance, basically, that's what it boils down to. Um, and you can start with the argument that, you know, a pastor or the reverend is consecrating elements of, in a church that's large, maybe has an overflow room. Um, if the people in the overflow room are not in the same exact room as the pastor, does that count? Um, if they're in another room removed, does that count? If they're in like the baby cry room, the nursery, and you bring the elements to them, does that count? What happens if they're down the hall? What if they're in another building? What about if you're in a multi-site church, et cetera? So it, it yeah. starts to, the question is, you know, at what point do you draw the line? Um, and I actually think, um, why not err on the side of inclusion? That the, the whole point of the Eucharist is to bring everyone together in the body. Um, that we, it's a celebration at the end of the day. And so, um, you know, if, if we were at the pearly gates, um, when we rather, as a ministry, err on the side of optimism and inclusion and reaching out to as many people as possible to invite them into the community. Um, that's one way to look at it, uh, as some of the uh, pastors have argued in terms of the church online community. Well, as long as the online church community doesn't lead to uh, seclusion or um, uh, a lack of community and interaction, you know, a bunch of hermits not connected to one another in real life, as long as it doesn't lead to that, then I think that this is 
an excellent thing. And most people will tell you that there's people that show up to church each and every Sunday morning that sit in a pew that are not connected to that body in any oh, way sure. but Sunday morning. So to me, that that is a you know pretty much not uh, an argument. So you know the fact that they're thinking about this and thinking about it uh, and really mulling it over, I think is great. And I think the work that you're doing there with Liquid Church with the online church community is awesome, Kenny. And thank you so much for your time. Kenny Zhang, the awesome online church pastor for Liquid Church. Thanks, Eric. Have a good day. Awesome.